Alright, so the other day I saw a comment asking me, you know, why do I only use the double undercut to bring cards to the top of the deck? So it got me thinking, um, and something that I saw the other, the other day was David Blaine on Conan O'Brien, and he was, he performed the Marlow Tilt, you know, for the ambitious card routine and whatnot, but it got me thinking, you could also use this as a card control technique. So if you want to take, you know, for example, let's say we take the Ten of Diamonds here, you can go ahead and tell the spectator that you're going to put it into the middle of the deck. All right, so you basically put it into the middle of the deck. You can shuffle it up, um, and let's say you wanted to give it a couple cuts and whatnot. So you cut up the deck a little bit, and then what you can do is go into some overhand shuffles, and then turn it out, and it's actually on top of the deck. So it's a pretty simple move um, if you can do it right, and I'll be teaching you guys how to do it uh, right now. All right, so the reason I'm starting to think about adapting the Marlow Tilt as a card control technique opposed to the double undercut is because if you take the card, like let's say the eight of, or eight of Hearts, for example, and you tell your spectator you're going to put it into the middle, and the first thing you do is stick it in and do a couple cuts, and then, you know, it looks a little bit a little bit fishy, whereas if you were to take the, you know, the Eight of Hearts, for example, and you said, all right, let's just stick it into the middle of the deck, and then you just kind of leave it there and start talking, it looks a lot more casual. You know, you're not messing with the deck at all. Um, the spectators, obviously, you're not going to see anything, and then you can go into, uh, you know, like a little shuffle or whatnot, um, the only issue with this, obviously, is that now the card is actually in the second position, right? But you've still got it basically to the top of the deck. The only issue is now you just have to get rid of um, that top card. So I'll give you guys a few tips and tricks and whatnot and then kind of show you um, how to do this little effect. All right, so I have an older tutorial. I'll leave the link on the screen for it. But basically, um, I'm not going to dive too much into this. You can learn the basics on the other video. Um, but essentially what you do is you're taking a spectator's card and you're putting it in the second position but making it look like it's going in the middle. So what I do is I get a pinky break above the top card and I let that pinky break kind of stay pronounced so from the sides it's going to look like this. Okay, The card's going to be propped up on all sides but from the front you can't see anything. And then I just prop the deck up with my thumb the same way you would do if you were sliding the card in the middle, the only thing is you have this top card poking out and the only thing you gotta do is stick the card in here, right? Now you want your spectators to be head on. Uh, you, don't want to you don't want to really be performing this from the side because you don't want them to see this. But if they're directly in front of you, that helps out 20 times better. So you stick your card in the second position. And then from here, the biggest tip I'd say is once you're sticking the card in and you push it about this way and it's going in the second position, I would say tilt your hand upwards. So from the front, the spectator is going to see this, right? And then you tilt your hand upwards. So as you stick the card in, you close the deck and tilt the deck upwards, and you can bring it back down. And that's going to conceal a lot. I'll leave a link to David Blaine performing it so you guys can get like a live action uh, view of how he does it. Um, but yeah, that's it. Basically, you take the top card and you make it look like it's going in the second position of. Uh, or you make it look like it's going in the middle, but in reality it's going in the second position. So from here, right, all you have to do is get rid of the top card. So let's say if the spectator's selection was the uh, was the two of spades. Um, all you have to do is, in the video I actually did a double undercut. Um, I know it sounds kind of controversial, I'm trying to get rid of it. But essentially, uh, my, my biggest pet peeve or the biggest concern I have is just the initial, the initial, you know, two cuts as you stick the card in. So if you've already had the deck sitting for a while and you've already done the Marlow Tilt, okay, and you've already done a couple Riffle Shuffles, when you cut the deck doing a double undercut, it's not going to be that big of a deal um, anymore. So that way you can get the card to, uh, to the top of the deck. Um, and then I'll show you guys a couple other methods. Now if you're completely opposed to using the double, the, uh, the double undercut, let's say the spectator selection was the eight of diamonds, right? And you've got that in the second position and you want to get rid of the top card. You basically can just leave the deck um, you know, on the ground or actually if you have a table, you can just take the cards and you'll basically slip the first card off while cutting the deck and then you'll maintain that card in the top position. So that's a pretty easy one. You're just basically taking the top card you know, off of the deck here with your other index finger, sliding it off, cutting the deck, and then the next card down is going to be the one on top. So that's basically it. I mean, I kind of wanted this video to be more of like a tips and tricks for intermediate card magicians about how to use the Marlow Tilt as a control. I think it actually works a lot better than the standard double lift um, or even like the dribble where you dribble the cards 
and then you have a spectator, you know, say stop, and then it's the queen of clubs, and then you get your out jog, and then again, you do um, the double undercut, right? And then you bring that queen to the top. So I think it's a pretty cool method that's been, it's been used more about for an ambitious card routine, but I think it could also be used as a, uh, as a card control. So let me know what you guys think about it down below in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe, and uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching.